A year ago, um, we were all looking with great expectations with the uh, ascent to the White House of a, of a leader um, who was dedicated to the goal of eliminating nuclear weapons from the world, he said in his Prague speech, um, maybe not in his lifetime, but he wanted to begin to put in place um, key steps to reach that goal, and he outlined uh, several goals of his administration. A year later, as we approach the anniversary of the Prague speech, there's not a whole lot to show in terms of actual accomplishments. There has been some growing momentum in terms of statements by statesmen and women around the world, in Britain, in Germany, in Russia. The very important um, uh, commission headed by Gareth Evans and Yukiko Kawaguchi, the International Commission for the uh, Nuclear Nonproliferation and Disarmament, have all um, contributed to a momentum in terms of rhetoric. But in terms of actual accomplishments on the ground, those who would criticize President Obama, and I'm not one of them, I support it very much, but his critics would say, what has he got to show for it? Now, it's too early to say after one year there's nothing, but let's just look at uh, where we are. Um, the uh, START follow-on treaty that he hoped to negotiate by December 5th, when the START one agreement uh, uh, ended, uh, is still very close to uh, completion, is what the negotiators have been saying ever since late November. They're almost there. It's imminent. It's around the corner. It's 95 percent done. But here it is, the end of January, and they're still 95 percent there. And why? I think it's because Russia has hardened its stance. It's uh, demanding more concessions from the United States. And the United States is not in a position to make those concessions, which you know, to an arms control expert might not appear to be that great. But the problem is that uh, uh, agreement has to be ratified by the U.S. Senate. And the Senate is, is very divided. The um, supporters of President Obama's policies may not have the two-thirds um, supermajority required for Senate ratification of a START follow-on treaty. So if it doesn't have uh, certain elements of verification uh, concerning uh, telemetry, for example, um, I think it, it could not, it possibly couldn't pass. And that would be terrible if he puts a, 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 a treaty to the Senate and doesn't pass. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing he was promoting, the um, early ratification and entry into force of a comprehensive test ban treaty. Well, there have been no more nations in the past year that have, uh, that have signed uh, the treaty or that have ratified it among the key states that have to ratify it. Indonesia made a good statement. Indonesia said it would ratify when the United States does. And I, I was hoping that would provide some momentum. I wish China would do the same thing. There's um, the Fissile Material Cutoff Treaty, uh, which um, Obama had uh, wanted to, uh, to push uh, after 12 years of languishing in the Conference on Disarmament in Geneva. Uh, in May, there was hope that finally, finally, diplomats in Geneva could begin a, a plan of action, a work plan on negotiating a uh, fissile material cutoff treaty. But then Pakistan, toward the end of the year, said, uh, oops, sorry, uh, we have to withdraw our support for consensus, and Pakistan has, con had, has continued that position. Uh, they don't want a treaty that they think will put them at uh, disequal uh, disadvantage with India, so that's not come to anything. Uh, the latest, uh, um, the, the next uh, most important step will be the United States uh, Nuclear Posture Review, which was supposed to have been done in February. It was postponed twice. Now it will be coming out on March 1st. Obama pledged in his Prague speech that he would reduce the role of nuclear weapons in American security policy. And the Nuclear Posture Review, done every eight years, is the most important way that this uh, reduction of the role of nuclear weapons can be uh, put on paper and, and incorporated into policy. Currently, U.S. Uh, policy is that nuclear weapons are to be used to deter, in addition to nuclear weapons, chemical and biological weapons, and even potentially uh, chem uh, conventional weapons in extremists uh, in a preemptive attack. Now, so there, there's, a, there's a large number of people in the United States that want to uh, reduce that role and agree with the uh, evans Kawaguchi Commission that the role of nuclear weapons should only be to deter other nuclear weapons. But there's entrenched um, 
uh, bureaucracies and, uh, and um, people with ideological commitments and also a strong sense of the need for deterrence that aren't willing to go that far. So I don't think that nuclear posture review will probably uh, satisfy um, the critics. I think it will, it will take some important steps already. It will be focusing less on the threat of, uh, of nuclear attack from countries like Russia, uh, state uh, attacks. It will be focusing more on nuclear terrorism, which is the, uh, the critical concern. Um, I think it's the, the concern about nuclear terrorism that is going to focus the energies of the Obama uh, team and indeed their allies in the rest of the, the world in the coming months. The uh, nuclear security uh, conference that Obama has called for April um, will be focusing exactly on this. And now efforts to reduce the threat of nuclear terrorism have an important uh, implication for disarmament and, and for non-proliferation because the goal is to uh, reduce the number of nuclear weapons, reduce their availability, keep them secure, do everything you can to prevent terrorists from acquiring uh, nuclear materials and nuclear weapons. And all of those steps that one takes uh, for that purpose also have an important uh, contribution to the goal of, of nuclear disarmament. You know, the, the reason that um, the world is blocked on uh, taking further steps toward disarmament is because the issues are, are multifaceted and they're uh, multidimensional and multinational. In, that is to say, there are, there, are, there are more than one party, and there are usually more than two parties. I mean, if, if countries like uh, Brazil and South Africa and Malaysia were to uh, join nonproliferation steps like accepting the IEA safeguards additional protocol, I think this could be an important measure that would give um, Americans uh, across the political spectrum more confidence that if America took steps toward disarmament, uh, that other countries would be more willing to join in nonproliferation efforts so that we collectively can move forward to more, toward a, a more secure world in terms of nuclear weapons. Now, I don't want to place all the onus on countries like Brazil and South Africa and Malaysia, all of whom have very good uh, nonproliferation records. They're not proliferating themselves, but they've been unwilling to take additional steps, and been, they've been unwilling, frankly, to, to call Iran into account for its violations. Um, I think this is one thing that could help. It's not going to unblock the momentum. I think if Russia were to... Um, um, indeed uh, match what it has uh, stated in its, um, in its pronouncements about reducing the role of nuclear arms. It would come more quickly to a uh, start follow-on treaty. And then we could move on to other treaties. You know, there have been times in this past year, I forgot to mention my, in my opening statement, when the United States has taken steps, which I thought would help unblock. When, when President Obama redirected the European missile defense plans, it wasn't done because of Russia's objections, but it, it met them. Russia's response was positive at the beginning, but later President Putin um, uh, seemed to be negative about the whole thing. So it, it demonstrates that you know, unilateral effort statements by, by one party uh, need to be met by uh, a willingness to compromise and find consensus by other parties.